Yay, it's Thursday, Facebook Live time. I'm a, just a little bit late looking at the clock going, oh my gosh, <laughs> how, how fast a minute goes. Well, thanks for joining me, whether you're on the live or on the replay. And as always, chime in and let me know you're there. Hi, Carol, welcome. Um, and uh, if you haven't before or you don't think I know, tell me where you're from. And I think I'm remembering, Carol's from New Hampshire. <laughs> Um, and then there's other people on there too, so uh, just let me know you're there. So I'm excited for today. I'm always excited actually when it comes to stamping. Um, I have some fun things planned, quick little announcements, and then we're going to get straight to a project. I'm trying to make up for a little bit of last week where, I mean, I just showed stuff. I didn't show projects, so my goal is to show you mostly projects today. So, um, uh, just to start with, the today the um, Everything Rosie product medley is available to um, to purchase. Actually, that started yesterday. Um, hi, Kathleen, and I think I saw another name go by, and now I can't remember who it was. <laughs> by too fast. Anyway, hi, people, <laughs> whoever's out there. I will catch catch up with you after when I see the comments. Um, so anyway, the uh, the Everything is Rosie product medley is a new sort of paradigm, a new type of product that Stamp It Up is offering. And um, it basically includes a whole range of projects, products that are consumables and non-consumables. So uh, it includes a stamp set, dies, designer paper, embellishments. So it's a mix of things. Instead of just being a bundle, which is a stamp set and dies, or stamp sets and a punch, um, it also includes the consumable. So if you, if you love it, um, it's a great way to get a lot of coordinating uh, products. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> um, welcome. So uh, the Everything is Rosie product medley is now available. It's only limit, limited time um, offer for the month of May or while supplies last. So uh, something to keep in mind. It was in my newsletter um, yesterday, some of the details, and uh, you can always let me know if you need more information. Uh, so let's see what else is up. Okay, so I have a BOGO sale going on right now. Some of you may know if you're newsletter subscribers. And today is the last day. So basically for every $30 in merchandise you spend in my online store, uh, you get a free item. And the free items range in value from, I don't know, $19 up to, I mean, $35 framelits and stuff like that. So I've kind of just rounded and just saying, okay, you get a single item. Uh, for every $30 you spend, no matter what the value of that item is. So it's pretty cool. I'm giving away my retired stuff, <laughs> saying goodbye to those goodies that I'm no longer using. So um, there is a link. Uh, let's see. I, I had a link in last week's Facebook Live. I'll put one in this one too. If you, don't, if you can't find it and you're interested in knowing more, definitely text me or message me or send me an email and I will be happy to send you the link. Um, Okay, let's see, what else? Okay, so today I ordered catalogs, yay! And a bunch of pre-order stuff, because today is the day that demonstrators get to pre-order from the annual catalog. I, of course, got to pre-pre-order because I'm on stage, but I uh, ordered a bunch of new goodies, and I'm planning some uh, projects with designer paper, so I got a bunch of designer paper. So anyway, super fun. Um, okay, let's see. That might be it for announcements. It's the only things I can think of right at the moment. Um, you guys know the regular stuff. Retired list is out. Uh, there's new clearance rack items uh, available also. And the new annual catalog goes live on June 4th. So those are come kind of like key little tidbits of information just to make sure you know them. All right, so for today's project, can anybody guess, did anybody guess what um, stamps that I'm using today? It's a much loved and been around for a very long time kind of stamp set. And um, some people will be very sad that it's going and maybe none of you guys don't have any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna try to give you a second. Oh, there you go, Mary, she knows. <laughs> Hi, Mary, yes, you know. So Lovely as a Tree has been around as long as I have been a demonstrator. Uh, so I've been demonstrator 16 years. They have fi they're finally retiring Lovely as a Tree. So kind of sad, but then, you know, in, out with the old and in with the new. So anyway, I am playing with Lovely as a Tree and one other set today. And I have a bunch of project samples that I want to show you. And, you know, at this time of year, I love to kind of have a, you know, I'm saying goodbye party to all kinds of products. And it's just fun to, you know, sort of, walk down memory lane 
<laughs> yes, Mary, it's going. Lovely as a tree. Okay, so if you don't aren't familiar with lovely as a tree, is there anybody out there that's not familiar? You might not want to admit it. Anyway, <laughs> this is lovely as a tree. Just fabulous, fabulous images. So um, I have a bunch of samples from, um, let's see, from the past. So let's see. Should I show you the samples first and then project demonstration or project demonstration first? Let's have a vote for just a vote. Anybody want to see it? Project samples first or project demonstration first? Let's see. Oh, it was your first stamp set. Yes, I believe it. It's, it's just a you know, perfect for masculine cards and all kinds of things. Um, hi, Marsha. <laughs> oh, Kathleen, you're not familiar with Lovely as a Tree. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, you're going to just, you're going to fall in love with that after I show you samples. Um, okay, so samples first. Okay, thanks, Mary. <laughs> okay, I'm reaching over here to my samples. I have, okay, check this out. All my Lovely as a Tree samples, and I probably, probably don't have all of them in here. So I'm just going to start. A lot of them are my own personal designs or, you know, of course, things that I case. But this is just simple masking. Lovely as a Tree. I love that one. I'm going to go through these kind of quickly since I have a lot of them. Uh, okay, so here's another one. I think this was a swap. It's so pretty. Another one that's a swap. Tell me if I'm going too fast. Who could do without that set? Okay, this is one of mine. And... Uh, Done with masking, and anyway, just love this one. Okay, this one you guys probably or may recognize. This is the black ice technique. This was my very, very first black ice project. Uses that big tree and lovely as a tree. And um, I'm gonna hold it up long enough. If anybody just like loves a sample, do some hearts, because you know how, how happy that makes me when you do hearts. <laughs> okay, so here's another one with lovely as a tree. This one was from way back when I first joined. It's got a, a heat embossing with silver on vellum and did a watercolor wash in the background. Okay, here comes another one. That's a swap. Now this one is, um, it's actually done with fun foam and you might not be, oh, I see hearts, yay, hearts. <laughs> Make me so happy. <laughs> Um, okay, who's doing those hearts? I can't really tell. There's like a tiny little picture, but anyway. So this is done with fun foam, and you can't probably tell, but it's actually, there's an impression in the foam, so you heat it, and you um, do the, the tree in there. So I have a second one, and this is sort of looks like leather because it's wrapped around. Um, case this from somebody online, uh, but just super fun, sponged along the edges, and then again, if you rub your hand against there, it's actually, there's an impression in the foam. So super fun. Hi Debbie, hi Tracy. <laughs> okay, moving right along. This is a good, an oldie but a goodie. Check that one out. With, again, lovely as a tree. You can see like this is the most popular image in there. You know, and I'm just realizing that I know this isn't all of them. Okay, that's, that's the same, different color scheme. <laughs> okay, now this is done with gel medium. I call it a gel schmoosh. <laughs> I showed that a little bit earlier this year, but it's uh, it's shiny, and there's ink in the gel. Anyway, super fun. Another one. Look at this crazy one with beads. Watercolor wash, white heat embossing. Um, another one that uh, made years ago, early on as a demonstrator. Hi, Gail. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, here's another one, masking. That was also done a long time ago. So it's supposed to look like kind of mountains or terrain or something. And then of course I, I did a coordinating envelope. So fun, I think this was my Christmas card one year. Also from early on, oh and I just noticed, it's actually got shimmer, it's shimmer paper. I don't know if you guys can see that in the light. But anyway, super pretty. Another one, this is a swap, nice and simple, the oak tree. Not, doesn't get as much attention, but um, still really pretty. Okay, and these are two variations on the same theme, so check that out. This was a technique we did in our technique club. I can't even remember what it's called. I think I might have made up a name because, you know, it was just like a crazy experimenting. So it's got dazzling diamonds glitter on there and sort of a watercolor wash. It's, um, uh, what is that? Oh, yeah, it's glossy cardstock. Oh, by the way, glossy cardstock is going away. 
it's a crime. I can't even stand it because I love the glossy cardstock. Polished stone is gone on glossy cardstock. This is another one. So this is a variation on the on this other one. So I'll co cover my face right now. You guys can see. So you see, they're just slight variations, but fun, 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 fun. Another one. <laughs> uh, all kinds of lovely as a tree projects. I like my purples, you guys know, purples. I know Mary likes purples too. Okay, this was from a million years ago. We're getting close to the bottom of the stack. I don't know, maybe eight more. <laughs> Hi, Allison. Oh, sideways. This I made, I mean, this was probably within my first year as a demonstrator. I used to love to do this little treatment, wrap the ribbon around and tie it. It's just a sweet little element, but simple, super simple card. Love it, if I might say so myself. Okay, another one. This, I think, was a Christmas card one year. Um, let's see. I'm trying to tell. I think that might just be white craft ink on that navy blue and then um, specks of silver ink. We used to have silver ink. We don't have that anymore. But um, I love that one. And similar layout with the little uh, holes on the top and the bottom. Had to use that dazzling diamond glitter. Oh, this is a, a fun fold, too. Let's see, it's called a matchbook style because it flips open like that and it goes into the little flap. So kind of a fun alternative fold. This was a swap. This uses the glossy cardstock. It's just uh, stamped uh, separate little images there over the top. Uh, I mean, little piece of cardstock rather. Okay, now this one I love. This one is, what is this called? Uh, I think it's called cotton candy. So I don't know if you can tell. It's got a window sheet on the top. There's glitter in there. Can you guys see that? And then various inks. Like who would do pink with the trees like that? But I love it. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> you love the gloss with the trees. Cool. Anyway, this is super, super pretty. You probably can't totally appreciate it uh, on camera, but it has glitter in it. Can you guys see? I'm like forcing you to look. C. <laughs> Again, I have to crack myself up. Okay, here's another one with the gel medium um, mixed in there. You see all that texture in there? I love gel medium. So much fun. Okay, moving right along. Almost there. Uh, okay, so this one's torn. Kind of cool, simple, nice masculine card. This one, does anybody remember using packing tape? with glitter. This uses packing tape with glitter. Can you see the glittery? Looks like snow. I think it's so much fun. This is like just crazy walking down memory lane kind of thing. And uh, okay, last but not least, this again, probably in the first year as a demonstrator, just doing that craft white with some glitter on there. I think it's silver glitter on the navy. Made my little moon. Anyway, fun. What do you guys think? <laughs> Incredible. I have more samples of Lovely as a Tree than any single other stamp set. It deserves some serious attention if we're saying goodbye to it, right? So, saying goodbye to Lovely as a Tree. Oh. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it is a set I will keep. It is, I am not getting rid of my Lovely as a Tree set, just so you know. All right. You love that last one. Cool. I'm so glad. Anyway, that was a lot. That was a lot of a lot of samples. Okay, so I'm ready. If you guys are ready, I'm going to face the cam camera down. I'm going to show you some fun, fun projects. I hope you think they're fun. I think they're fun. Okay, so here we go. Doing my little whoop-de-doo with my camera. And face the camera down. So there's my Everything is Rosie flyer. I actually meant to show you that, so guess what? I'm doing it now. Okay. I think I'm a little bit wonky here. Got to get the camera facing the right way. You remember the packing tape? Yeah. There's so many things to remember. So many different tips and tricks and methods, and that's why we love this, right? So much to love. Okay, so, lovely as a truth. <laughs> So here's the flyer for Everything Rosy. So that sort of shows you a little picture of everything that you get, a listing of everything you get. That was in my newsletter. And then that's the stamp set. It's a really pretty set. And it's kind of a shame it's only gonna be around for a month, but um, 
there it is. All righty, so here we begin. So the inspiration for this, of course, is lovely as a tree. I told you we're using two stamp sets, but one it's just one, one of the cards has a different stamp set, but I'm gonna, I'll just take you through my journey here. Okay, so has anybody played with masking tape or painter's tape? Because that's what we're playing with today. So we're gonna start with a piece of just regular old cardstock. I have already gotten it started with one little element there. And I wanna show you several different things. So I've given myself a little head start on some of them to, to help. So what I've done is I've put my uh, Mango Melody color on here and this piece is size so that my strips are gonna fit not tightly. So next I'm using Daffodil Delight and I'm taking a piece of just masking tape. You see I've labeled this one because I can use it multiple times. As you use the ink, it sort of takes some of the stickiness off so you can use it again and again because you don't want the tape to, of course, stick to your paper. So I am going to just take, has anybody, chime in, have, has anybody ever played with masking tape and ink? Masking tape and ink, that's the question of the moment. Um, and I am looking for something that I need right here. Okay. So I'm putting my masking tape down and the masking tape piece needs to be kind of long depending on you know, the size piece of your cardstock. So I'm using a piece of scrap paper to press it on there. I'm basically using my masking tape as a stamp. Okay, I'm waiting. Nobody's done this? Has anybody done this? Is anybody still listening? <laughs> uh, it's so funny because of course here I am and I have to read your comments to know if you're still paying attention. Um, okay, so I've got my Daffodil Delight on the back side and I am just going to place it down next to the first one with a very thin little edge there and press it down. So I'm doing a couple of variations on this, like I said, so I just want to take you through this. So each time you do it, it's going to come out a little bit different, so you kind of get a little bit of texture in there, depending on how the ink stuck to your tape. Oh, you've done it. Very good, Allison. Somebody had to have done it. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've done it, but it's fun. It was so fun to bring it back out and play with it. Okay, so I've done my daffodil, and now I'm going to do my last color, which is soft sea foam. Okay, so again, labeled, and I'm just going to stick it on there and tap down my paper on top of it. And then I'm going to move it over because I need to make sure that it's long enough so it covers the full width of that paper. Now, if I weren't like rubbing it really hard, then you would get more of a modeled um, amount of ink on your, uh, on your masking tape. So that is an option and it is kind of a fun look as well. So you can see this is pretty tight in here. So I'm just gonna have a tiny little thin white line between those two and then the same between the Daphne Delight and the Soft Sea Foam. Uh, and you see, okay, so I didn't go all the way to the edge. Can you guys see that? So it's not totally stamped on the edge. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go like this. Just putting it on the ink, flatten it down there. And I sort of got it on there. I gotta do a little bit more. This is a pretty pale ink, but okay, good enough. All right, so there we go. So that's my my piece, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp on it. But I have already done one, so I'm gonna show you what I finished. And it is that's the finished card. So I did just what I showed you, and that's the. So you see how they turn out. A little bit different each time. So when I was doing this one, I sort of felt like, I don't know, like it needed something else in here. And so I'm going to show you my backside because of course I, I had to do my backside. So my backside, I did the same way except for I did it with the um, granny apple green. So it's kind of got a lot more vibrance to it. But I thought, well, maybe there's a different way to do this. So I played around. So I'm going to show you what I have in mind. So I turn my paper over, and I've done two out of the three. Yay, by the magic of TV. <laughs> I think it's really pretty too. I saw that, I saw that comment from Pam. Thank you so much. Okay, so here I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another twist on this. So the more you play with something, the more you think of different ways to do it. So here's my different way. So this is kind of the same way, right? I'm just gonna 
put some soft sea foam onto my masking tape. And I'm gonna make sure that I have enough length. Now, when you pull off your masking tape piece, it's good to make it a little bit longer. Like I didn't make this quite long enough. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll make like a little handle on the edge. I'll show you this on my mango. So on my mango, I folded back my tape on itself. So I had like a little handle to hold onto it. And I dropped my soft sea foam. Okay, so I'm not done. I just put soft sea foam over this whole thing. <laughs> you took a project, a picture of my project. Good for you. I love it. Now, here's what I'm going to do. This is a new twist, something I had never done before. I was playing today and had a little brainstorm. I wanted the perfect mix of the soft sea foam and the granny apple greens. So, what I'm going to do is just touch the edge of my my little soft sea foam, I'm sorry, my uh, masking tape against the edge of the granny apple green ink pad. Just kind of trying to catch a little bit on the edge. Now I could press it down and put my paper on the top, but I don't really want it to be that solid. I just want to have a little bit of the green in here, the darker green. So you guys see that, how I got a little dark on the edge. Now, dang, just got some green on my finger. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, and I, I did this on my pants earlier. <laughs> I put this down on my pants because I didn't want to get water everywhere. I'm gonna spray it. I'm gonna do the spritzy technique where I'm gonna help mix my colors a little bit on my masking tape. Now, is that not cool? Somebody give me hearts for that. I think it's like the coolest thing ever. I love Granny Apple Green too, Allison. <laughs> it's a great color. Okay, so now I've got my mix of soft sea foam and Granny Apple Green on that masking tape. I'm gonna take my paper towel away and I'm gonna make sure that my Granny Apple Green is towards the bottom because I kinda of want the dark green to be towards the bottom and I'm gonna stamp it <laughs> I like that I'm stamping my masking tape and then we'll get to compare the two sides okay so is that not cool I think that is so cool I'm so happy with myself I should just pat myself on the back I think it's so pretty so now we have to stamp our trees on there because I think this is going to be the the ultimate in perfect combination balance of that other focal piece that I showed you a minute ago. Does anybody else want to see it stamped? <laughs> of course you do. Say yes. Give me hearts. <laughs> Whoever did all those hearts earlier, I love you. I don't know who you are. You can chime in and tell me, but you know, it just makes me so happy. I need that positive reinforcement. Does anybody else need positive reinforcement in their lives? <laughs> Yes, you need positive reinforcement, or, or yes, uh, I don't know what you're, I'll, <laughs> I'll say yes, I'm talking too quickly. I have no idea what you're answering. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and now stamp my, my trees. Now I want to make sure, yeah, okay, I think I got enough ink. Okay, here we go. Stamp my little string of trees. And is it beautiful? Ooh, ah. I can hear the oohs and the ahs in the background. Isn't that a nice, different kind of balance to have the little darker green on the bottom? It's making me happy. We can compare. It's like just that touch of dark green that brings it just to, to life, but it's not so strong like that one. Is everybody with me on this? Do you guys agree that this is like the perfect balance that with the little green on the edge? Say yes. I like when people agree with me. Okay, so that is project number one. I will be putting this together later because I just think it's fabulous. And you should also know that in the background of this one, I used the subtle embossing folder. You can see the, the texture in there. I love this embossing folder. Um, <laughs> I loaned it to somebody recently and I, I swear I felt like I was going into withdrawal. I told her so as well. It's like, I can't live without that embossing folder. Okay, so you've seen me do like this, the strips and everything. So I wanna show you a variation on the strips done in a different orientation, also with Lovely as a Tree, but you don't need to see me do all of it, right? So here is another version. I've used the other images in the set. And that's, you know, it's kind of a little wild. I oriented it the, the other way, obviously, and I used 
more colors. This one has the pumpkin pie at the top. And then I also did the back side, but this is, I, I don't like it as much. I don't know, maybe you guys do. It's just too much black. But <laughs> positive reinforcement is soothing. Yes, yes. No, you're doing something, you know, right, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just attach this. I was waiting to attach it because I wanted to show you guys the back side, and I hope nobody else favors the back side. I thought this was better. It actually looks better in person than it does on camera. It looks kind of crazy busy on camera. But anyway, I hope somebody likes that. Okay, so that's the strips. Now, oh, and I have another one. So the technique that I did where I added the little bit of dark along the bottom, I did that on another sample, and I used um, this stamp set, uh, this nice big image there to do it, and I combined a bunch of different colors. And since you saw what I did, I don't need to do it again. So I'm just gonna show you the card. So that is my card. So I used the Granny Apple Green and the Soft Sea Foam. And let's see, I need my little cheat sheet. I had it somewhere. Oh yeah, and then I used um, Daffodil Delight and the Mango Melody. And then for this piece, I did Calypso Coral and Real Red. So anyway, what do you guys think? And then of course it's got, um, it's got the, the Granny Apple Green in there. So it's super brilliant and pretty. I think it's kind of crazy fun doing the multiple colors with the um, masking tape. So anyway, I like it a lot. I hope you guys do too. Okay, so there's one other thing that I wanted to show you. Um, and let's see, take these guys away. I'm not gonna use that anymore. So this one actually uses some of the new in colors and um, Gonna bring those colors in where are they yes so for this one I used the purple posy which is one of the new in colors and seaside spray and then I used um, the soft sea foam again and for this one I am gonna start let's see fresh no actually I can start with my where'd it go my tape is gone I think I might did you just start with a new one the tape got attached to something and went away. Okay, so I can show you what I do. Long piece, and then I fold it over on the end to make my little handle. And that just helps me have something to hold on to at the ends. So that's my little trick there. So for this one, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. Oh, there's my, now I found my masking tape over there on the other table. So I'm going to do the same thing. But for this one, it's going to be like two-step stamping or stamping off. So I'm going to start with my green at the bottom. And this piece is a little bit longer this way. So um, when I was playing with it, this was actually one of the first things that I tried. I was trying to fill it in. I was trying to uh, like fill up the space and make it sort of gradual. So, so I'm, that's what I'm doing here a little bit. Just using this to do lines. Like if I had a brayer, it'd be kind of the same sort of thing. So there's gonna be a little bit of overlap of the colors. Okay, so that's color number one. The next color is the Seaside Spray. And Looking for my masking tape for that one, which I can't find that one either. It's okay. okay. There we go. I got lots of masking tape. So again, now if I don't put the paper down on top, again, I'm not going to get as much coverage on the masking tape because I'm not like rubbing my finger against the ink pad, but that's okay because then I get some texture and different shapes and it's just kind of fun. So I put down my blue. And I think I'm gonna not press too hard because I intentionally wanna have more texture in there. Overlap a little bit. See, I'm just, I'm not pressing super hard. Let's go up a little bit more. Take off the last bit of that ink. So you guys kind of get the idea. 
I'm going to do one last element with this is what the purple posy and another piece of masking tape. So after I finish this, I do have one other sort of fun idea to share that I've played with in the past a little bit, but I didn't make a project with it, but I thought you might enjoy knowing it. So um, now I'm going to do my purple posy. And of course, I'm going off the edge on that one. And I'm going to overlap the blue just a little bit to get some of those colors to blend and mix. Okay, so there you go. There's my little blended mix of colors. And then I'm going to show you my finished project of that one. This one, I also used the subtle embossing folder in the background. So there's my finished card. You can see I have, um, yes, and I did overlap the different colors. Maybe it doesn't, it's not obvious, but I did on this one a little bit, um, the purples in here and some of the blues and greens, uh, you know, overlap a little bit. You can see it on this one, a little bit green in the blue. So anyway, um, I think it turned out really pretty. It's very soft and these are probably my two favorite colors of the in colors that are around. So anyway, that's where we are. And the last thing that I have done in the past and uh, have not done it with this in this creative session. Now this one I think you can put this way or this way, which I think is kind of cool. But um, <clears throat> is you can take like a bigger piece of masking tape or even the smaller one and tear it. And then intentionally, now I gotta move all that away. Um, ink it up in the torn, you know, with the torn element, and then create some fun different shapes. So now maybe I want to take my negative space piece, this one, let's put it on the green just for the heck of it. And maybe I want it to sit in there, or maybe I want it to be offset, you know, whatever, whatever inspires you, but you can kind of create a different fun, just, I don't know, you're not really, you can't really see too well there, but you get the idea. So you could just play with all kinds of things, and you could also, of course, use these as a mask, use a sponge over the top and sponge to get that shape, um, or create patterns, or gosh, it's the, the sky's the limit, right? <laughs> Love the torn tape. Yes, so go make a project, Pam, and share with us. Um, I would love to see that. And uh, so that's what I hope. So I did want to talk just one second um, because this is, um, you know, it's a technique, right? It's a method for doing something, multiple steps, multiple variations. And the more you play with it, um, the more different variations you can come up with. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera so you can see. And you're seeing my ceiling first. Ah, there we go. <laughs> um, but so I have this vision, right? So you guys know I'm working on a technique club and I've been working on ideas and I'm getting some things written down and envisioning how it's going to go. So um, if this were a technique class that I was teaching, what, what would be included, the pieces and parts that I would have would be a project kit to make probably two projects, maybe more than one of each, uh, a technique page. So I'll tell you, this technique page I made with my clubs some years ago. You see this is the, what am I calling it, painter's tape background, masking tape background. So there's instructions on one side and then an example of what we made on the other. And for my clubs, what we had done was we took this basic focal piece and made it into a card. So um, for the technique club, what I'm envisioning is a technique page, not that, not this layout, because it's not very practical, and not everybody has a book that size, so it would be a different size. And then I would be doing a PDF that would have multiple pictures of all the steps in the process of the given technique. Um, and uh, let's see what else, missing something. And then of course the kits, the actual kits to make the cards. Um, and how I'm thinking about the technique club is that it's sort of a deep dive into one technique with multiple ways of doing it. So in my PDF, if this were a, a technique class that I was putting into a PDF, 
Um, I would, of course, be showing it in a video, and then you would also get variations on how to do the technique. So it's not just, okay, the first example of what I showed, maybe you're gonna see you know, two, three, or four, whatever, different examples depending on the technique and what it lends itself to. So my goal is in doing a technique club is to kinda get the creative juices flowing, to show you some things that I've played with, to give you some examples of things that you could do, and then, you know, just like Pam said, I love the torn thing, that you go off and then just make your own little masterpieces and play with the techniques. And in addition, you would have, depending on what configuration you decide to buy into with the club, you would have a, a PDF so you could look at all those instructions step by step with pictures. You would have the technique page that would have the little synopsis of the instructions with one sample. Um, and then the video to use. And then if you participate in the project kit piece, then you'd have that also. So, um, and I'm envisioning that the project kits will have maybe some multiple little pieces to play with. So if we're messing with watercolor paper and you want to, you know, practice on something first, you might have some scraps of watercolor paper to play with and try it out before you do it on your card or you do it for your technique example. Just, you know, so that it's all about playing and having fun. So. That's a little bit about my vision for the Technique Club, and I'm hoping that I can go live and launch it by the end of May, and some of the, you know, I'll have a live class in June, and then some of the pizza and parses won't, wouldn't happen until, you know, mid-June, so there's a whole process that I've got in mind. So, definitely let me know if you have questions about that, or if you have thoughts or observations about my vision relative to your interests. Um, and, uh, you know, again, the whole idea is to, you know, get people excited about creating and give you a, a great jumping off point for um, making projects that you love and then being able to document it so you can go back and look at it later. So that's my little two cents about um, the Technique Club, or maybe it was 25 cents, I don't know. <laughs> So I guess the last little reminders, I'm back next Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for another Facebook Live. And next week will be the um, Simple Sweet Stampers Tutorial Bundle Project. So I'll be showing my project and I'll be showing two other projects um, that other people in the team are showing for their tutorial. So a little sneak peek into the tutorial bundle. The theme for the May um, tutorial bundle is the classic garage. So um, a masculine theme cars, which is fun. And let's see, don't forget, today is the last day for BOGO. If you need that link, let me know. And let's see. And then of course, everything Rosie medley is available now, product medley. So let me know if you have questions and thank you so much for joining in. I hope you've enjoyed the projects today and um, hope to see you next Thursday. Happy crafting everybody. Bye.